understanding the fundamentals of customer service. Even before COVID-19, customer service delivery was very problematic for several entities across this beautiful continent of Africa, even before COVID-19. So working in this space for over 20 years, I, I've heard all sorts of customer complaints from individual customers, from corporate customers, from customers of public sector institutions, customers of private sector institutions, customers of universities, customers of fast moving consumer good companies, customers of banks, customers of insurance companies. And the reason why I get so traumatized when I hear these complaints is that I still struggle to understand how we all don't realize as Africans that if we began to understand our customers a little better, then we can serve them a lot better. So the issues where customers have problems which become repeat problems, it's as if the person complained about this issue, and in two weeks they complain about the same issue, and in three months about the same issue. It becomes a major problem for them. Sometimes I wonder whether we don't essentially understand what customer service is. That's why today I want to just talk to you about the fundamentals of customer service. Well, what is customer service? It is the sum of all interactions between a customer and your organization. It is the blend of your organization's physical performance and the emotions you create all measured against customer expectations across all your points of interaction. So let me break this definition down a bit. We say it is the sum of all interactions between a customer and the organization. Let's step back a bit and ponder this particular definition. Think about all the ways your organization is purporting to interact with your customer. Let's take a bank. Today you have brick and mortar branches. There are human beings in the branch. There's water at the door. There's sanitizer in the branch. There's a branch manager. There's a teller. There's a personal financial consultant, all in that fiscal building. That's one point of interaction. But let's break it down a little more. Even in that one point of interaction, nowadays, before you enter that space, there's a security man outside telling you to wash your hands Use sanitizer. You have to sit and do physical distancing. You must have a, a mask on. So think about it. On your arrival, you are dealing with a security man before you enter and deal with teller, maybe a national service person. That's just brick and mortar. Let's migrate to digital channels. This same bank has Facebook account. They have Instagram account. This same bank, they say they have Twitter account. Then they have email as well. And then they have customer hotline. So they have telephone hotline. They have, look, this one bank I'm using as an example eh? They can have maybe up to 17 or 19 different points of interactions. Now, why is this important to me? Because for most banks, they may not even have mapped the entirety of those interactions to determine all the different customer journeys that customers can embark upon to interact with them. So the guy on the Facebook account is sleeping. You send a request or a query through the Facebook account, they respond in eight days. The person on the Instagram account is sleeping and would expect that the query will come through Instagram because Instagram is all photos. So that one is also sleeping. The person on the telephone hotline is also... So listen, if you want to have customer service excellence, I'm begging you, go and map today the total ecosystem of interactions that people are back on to come and see you and ensure that you are monitoring all of them to achieve service excellence. And I told you it's also fiscal and then emotional. What does that mean? When customers come to you as well, they expect the ambassadors of your institution to treat them in such a way that they feel as if you are worth dealing with and then they are so delighted by the way you treat them that they go out and become customer advocate for your institution. So make sure that brick and mortar is delivering well, digital is delivering well, 
And your customer ambassadors are also delivering at a level where the emotional takeout is excellent so you can achieve customer service excellence. Thank you for listening to me, and I'll come to you again with some more exhilarating tidbits on customer service excellence. Thank you. Thank you.